Now welcome to another edition of News from Naboo with the Worst Lightning Takes. And let's get right to the news. We're going to start out by talking about the Lando Calrissian TV movie? show. You mean movie, right? Well, that was kind of just announced-ish. We know, Donald, we know Donald Glover, who of course played Lando, was going to be taking over writing duties with his brother Stephen. Now Stephen Glover was in an interview with Pablo Torres... And kind of made it sound like it's not a TV show anymore. At least it's something, right? He, he said... For a while there, I don't think it was anything. Yeah. It was kind of in limbo for years. And then it came out that it was going to be made a show by the yeah, Glover they, Brothers. They fired the original writer. One or glove for some, each hand. Oh. Always two there are. Jeez. That was bad. Whatever. But anyway, no, they had somebody that they let go, and then the Glover Brothers, always two there are. Mm-hmm. They've taken over, and we assumed things were going to move ahead as a series, but now one of the gloves has said... Steven, not yeah. Lando. <laughs> so He's got a name. Yeah, we're doing... I mean, it's not even a show. The idea right now is to do a movie, but, like, that's the thing. Right now, because of the strike, everything's kind of a telephone game, all the information coming out. So he probably even shouldn't have said anything about it? No, he shouldn't have, because... Even the host kind of confirmed that the Glovers hadn't really talked much with Lucasfilm about what they well, can they and can't really say. Well, they really can't, can they? I mean... And when they say movie, that's something we have to pay attention to. They're saying movie, but let's not forget, it could be like those Marvel special events. It doesn't have to be a theatrical release, is what you're implying. It could be a Disney Plus exclusive. I talked a long time ago when we watched Werewolf by Night, I talked about... Why can't Star Wars do this? Yeah. Give us like a full hour long thing. <laughs> yeah. I called it my Star Wars special. Story. I just call it a story. No, it's a special. Whatever, whatever shape. I mean, look at Tales of the Jedi. You mm -hmm. had these little shorts. You can go the other way too. Make something a little longer that just doesn't make a long form have to, story. And there's no reason to beholden yourself to any sort of parameters, be it a series or a movie. Just put the story out there. However, I mean, you think it's going to work. I think this is something that you were talking about earlier today. If people didn't want to pay money to go see Solo and Solo was considered a failure, it was. It well, why money. were they going to go see in droves to see the Lando movie? That's the oddity. That was the movie. Solo was the movie where Bob Iger's like, whoa, we did too much too fast. Maybe we mm -hmm. can't do these character films. Maybe that doesn't work for Star Wars. And now we're going to do Lando, who is, let's be real, he's a very popular, beloved character, no yes. doubt. But he's probably not Han Solo, right? No. So, he wasn't in all three of the original trilogy. Yes. He's he was a he's a great side character. Well, yeah, he's not really he's a not, he's not one of the featured three. Yeah. We we all love Lando. Nothing against Lando. I think he's he's a great character. He's the smoothest smuggler in the galaxy. Oh, Billy D was fantastic, and yes. I think Donald Glover channeled I thought Billy he did D well, like yeah. really well. So I maybe could definitely that's, see that. Is that what they think here? That Donald played a better Lando than Alden Ehrenreich played Han and That there? could be. Because I didn't hear any critiques about Lando. Meh, you know, Not a few really. here and there. But he did he did great. I thought it was phenomenal, yeah. But I do think it is strange that you're like, well, Solo was the movie that derailed our plans for the anthology movies, but oh, now we're going to go movie. and do Lando. Yeah. Especially seeing as, why are we even bothering to, why are they like bothering to talk about this during the strikes? They can't even do anything. You know, yeah. everyone's tied up. I could tell you all and announce I'm making a Star Wars project. Aha! Yeah, and, and then the strikes go out and I go, oh, the strikes, they ruined everything. And, then, and as you pointed out, just because he says that that's what they're thinking, that doesn't necessarily mean that's what Lucasfilm is thinking. If they can't really be talking to each other right now, that might just be them thinking, hey, you know what? I got a better idea for a movie than I do a series, so... They have they have enough movies right now. Yeah, they I think this is going to be a Disney Plus three. project. Three? Three theatrical More than releases. That. Well, it's like, what, well, six? Well, it depends on if you count all the other ones, like the Rogue Squadrons, hey, the Tiger No, TTs no, we've got the, the New Jedi Order film. Yes. Dave Filoni's film. Yep. James Mangold's Dawn of the Jedi type film. Yep. Taiko Waititi's film. But those three have not Sean been like... Sean Levy's film. And then now Lando. Thing? Yeah. My point is the three that were announced at Celebration, those feel like the most uh, unsturdy or stable ground, even though it still feels like uh, any kind of tremor could knock them over. Those ones at least were like officially like, these are getting done. Yeah, they actually came yeah. out of Celebration and made a big announcement. They brought out people, Ray and some of the other people attached to them, Filoni. Mm -hmm. So it makes it seem like, yeah, we really mean these and these are coming Honestly, I think soon. the Mandoverse is the most likely because... Yeah, I Those think Those projects is go well. I think the Mandoverse is 
probably if you had to pick one that you're like this is the one i think is most likely i would say mandoverse this is the one i would say the least likely is the james mangold after indiana mm. jones flopped that's it's hard to bring him back and say here's the keys to our other big franchise you know take it for a spin but i'm sure Please there's don't crash into another tree directors out there who've headed projects and had bad ones and then had phenomenal ones after that well james mangold did logan arguably one of the most beloved yeah uh, so i'm still willing to give him a ever. chance yeah, I'm not. We don't know how much hack. input he yeah. had and how much he was overridden by other factors. You are implying Kathleen Kennedy may have uh, meddled. I imply nothing. Hmm. I shall take it as such. All right, let's move into the next story today because I know this one you were very interested in. I was. Yeah. We had a reveal of a new Star Wars book, Star Wars: The Living Force, by John Jackson Miller. If that name is familiar with you, it's because he has written the Kenobi. EU novel, which is beloved. It's very good, yeah. Dark Horse's Knights of the Old Republic comic, and the first Disney era canon book, Dawn. A New Dawn. This is his first like long form Star Wars project since New Dawn's publication in 2013. Yeah, like, yeah it's like 10 years ago. Hard to believe, but yeah. it's been 10 years of Disney canon. Yeah, it has. Huh. It has. Well, this book is going to be set one year before The Phantom Menace. Miller is going to be taking readers on what is described as like a road trip with each member of the Jedi Council. While one member of the Order fears about the fact that they're, he's worried they're going to decline into nothing. Hmm. Here's what he actually, these are some comments he said on what to expect. In the years before The Phantom Menace, Yoda, Mace Windu, and the entire Jedi Council confront a galaxy on the brink of change. The Jedi have always traveled the stars, defending peace and justice across the galaxy, but the galaxy is changing, and along with it, the Jedi Order. More and more, the Order finds itself focused on the future of the Republic, secluded on Coruscant, where the 12 members of the Jedi Council weigh crises on a galactic scale. Yet another Jedi outpost left over from the Republic's Golden Age is set to be decommissioned on the planet of Quen. Qui-Gon Jinn challenges the Council about the increasing isolation of the Order, Mace Windu suggests a bold response. All 12 Jedi Masters will embark on a goodwill mission to help the planet and remind the people of the galaxy that the Jedi remain as stalwart and present as they have been across the ages. But the arrival of the Jedi leadership is not seen by all as a cause for celebration. Warring pirate factions have infested the sector in the increasing absence of the Jedi. To maintain their dominance, the pirates unite intent on assassinating the Council and they are willing to destroy countless innocent lives to secure their power. Cut off from Coruscant, the Jedi Masters must reckon with an unwelcome truth that while no one thinks more about the future than the Jedi Council, nobody needs their help more than those living in the present. It, it sounds to, interesting. It seems to connect to uh, the High Republic, where the way, High Republic was about the Jedi kind of going out there and expanding. like... Expanding. Yeah, they, were, they, were, they literally made a beacon to remind the galaxy of their existence mm -hmm. and their trying to help move into the Outer Rim. They're doing all these things, so it's like... Well, in all the High Republic books, they're spread out throughout the galaxy. They're, here's some over yeah. here, here's some over here. They had a, a presence. Exactly. That was kind of the point of the High Republic era mm -hmm. so far, is to show the Jedi trying to be out there, trying to be very hands-on in and, the galaxy. And it's interesting, because this is one year before A Phantom Menace, when they're realizing that they are kind of secluding themselves based on Coruscant. Yeah. And following only hearing their news through the Republic and stuff instead of being a presence in the universe. Yeah, you got to go out there. You got to listen to the living force. You got to go out in the name of the book. You got to go out there and uh, be amongst the people. See mm -hmm. what they really need. Sometimes, uh, believe it or not, governments don't always have the best interest of their people at heart. Mm-hmm. No, I'm excited for this because I, I do like Jonathan Jackson Miller's work. I love the Kenobi book. A New Dawn is, is good. It's a solid book. Well, what's interesting is this is something you've talked about. It's like Lucasfilm Publishing is finally really exploring the prequel era Jedi that Qui-Gon was the center at a lot of debate because he kind of took notice of the problems. Yeah, he was calling them out, I think. Right. That's why he's not on the council. And he didn't Miller want to wanted, wanted to explore want that more. I think that's, that's what he we need. He kind of compared his approach to Qui-Gon in this book as the way he tackled Obi-Wan and Kenobi, saying, Many of my Star Wars works have explored what it meant to be a Jedi alone, cut off from the Jedi Order. The organization came in for criticism in those books, and I found myself sympathizing with Qui-Gon Jinn, who felt they'd lost touch. So when this uh, editor from Random House invited me to develop a story for the Jedi Council in their last year before The Phantom Menace, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. 
with some counselors trying to see the future while others are reeling under the bureaucratic demands of an increasingly corrupt republic, Qui-Gon challenged them to get out of the council chamber and rediscover the Jedi they used to be. Their response is a road trip for all 12 <laughs> counselors, giving us our first in-depth adventures with many of them, and a look into a side of the galaxy that can't be seen from their temple on Coruscant. We also learn what it's like to live in the immediate pre-prequel era, whether you're a civilian, a member of the Ninth Republic military, or in the underworld. This book is coming out on April 9th next year. All right. And Not it does sound away, really year. interesting. I don't know how I feel about Yaddle being on the cover, because we already know what happens to Yaddle. What are you saying? Well, I'm just curious, then, if this is a year before, that means we have rough, you know... Well, we all know her days were numbered. We know when she disappeared. Know, she's yeah. in... Episode 1 and then gone in episode 2. Yeah, well, she's gone, yeah. But I'm very interested because it means Yaddle and Yoda will be together on this mission. And you know what will happen? Nothing. They won't talk about any of their... Grogu will be born. Oh my god, is this like... (laughs) Are they going to like sneak away and make it like a romantic holiday? (laughs) And we get the origin story of Grogu? This is the origin story of Grogu that you never wanted. You didn't want. If you thought Princess and the Scoundrel was bad... We don't know how they're made. They might be like eggs that hatch in X <laughs> Maybe amount of, you know. they just have to kiss once. In isn't? years and something like that. You know, you just kiss and then babies are born. I'm that's just all. I'm just joking around. Well, so am I, but I, I don't I don't think that's going to happen. But that would be a huge twist, wouldn't it? And then we find out Grogu really is their child. Yes. Wow. Mind-blowing. Right out the window. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> yes, you are. But anyway, that's going to be all we got for this time. Now it's your turn to take to the comments below. Tell us what you think about Lando turning into a movie. And tell us what you think about this book. Any interest in reading it or maybe not. Whatever the case may be, leave your comments below. Let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.